a stunning island deeply rooted in hundreds of years of rich history. Beautiful beaches, traditional dhows, and architecture paint a picture of timelessness, which is home to the melting pot of cultures found in Lamu. The Lamu archipelago lies just off Kenya's northeast coast and was one of the first landing and trading points in Africa for, amongst others, the Portuguese, Arabs, and Chinese. The Old Town is today a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and its ancient beauty complements the modern sites that make Lamu as unique as it is today. In this week's program, we look at not just the history of the archipelago, but also into its future as we take a walk through Lamu. I am Liu Feifei, and welcome to Talk Africa. Lamu's Old Town is filled with beautiful landmarks like the Swahili House Museum, the Lamu Fort, and the first post office in East Africa. Nestled in the historic Old Town, the German post office was established in 1888 and is today one of Lamu's many museums. The most well-known museum on the island is the Lamu Museum. It exhibits all the major significant milestones from the archipelago's history and culture. The best place to learn about the island's history is at the Lamu Museum, and the best person to tell us about it is the museum's curator, Haj Mohammed. So let's go and meet him. Hi, Haj. Karibu. Thank you. Asante. I'm very excited to be here to get this private tour. Tell me, when was the Lamu Museum built? The Lamu Museum building was built in, during the 19th century as a residence for the Mudir of Lamu. And when did it become a museum? And the museum was the building itself was converted to a museum in 1971. I understand it's one of the oldest surviving settlements on yeah. the East African coast. And in fact, Lamu town is the oldest settlement in the region. It started from 19th century. It has survived for the last seven, 700 years up to date. Here we have the map for the East Indian Ocean trade. And when, when was this map, before we get started, yeah. when was this map representing? This map was, is representing Indian Ocean trade, and the, the trade started from 12th century. And we have uh, Lamu here, where we are getting goods from different uh, continents, from China, India, Persia, and also they were taking some goods from Lamu, like ivory, uh, rhino horse, leopard, turtle, simsim, and other goods from here to the, their Area. Oh, so we we have evidence for this uh, in our museum here. We can see them here. So if, uh, here we have uh, in this room we have a lot of archaeological material to show the evidence of Lamu has been trading with different parts of the world. You can see for the variety of them. Um, that's fantastic. Over here, I actually see something that's quite familiar to my eyes. Could these be from China? Yeah, this most of this uh, uh, they are coming from China. China. And about what time did these um, well Chinese China <laughs> arrive in Lamu? Yeah. They arrived uh, from 12th century. In fact, we have this uh, very familiar celadon here. It is believed that if you po put this uh, poisonous uh, food, it will just crack. This is uh, the, the evidence to show that the p different people from uh, Arabia, from Persia, and from China, they were interacting. They were collecting people uh, things from different parts of the world. And in fact, in other places of this other. museum, you also have evidence of that confluence of cultures. Yeah, we have uh, other places like uh, doors, which was were brought from Gujarati, from Omani, and we have very familiar door which is Omani style, and it is mostly adapted here in Lamu. Oh, I would love mostly, to see them if yeah, that's possible. Yeah, here is the, yeah. the door. 
as I was walking around the island, I actually did notice all the homes had beautifully carved doors. Yeah, in fact, they have, uh, we have a lot of uh, door style here, variety of them. And one of them is a Omani style, which is commonly used here in Lamu. This is the door, which is Omani style. You can see it's very beautifully carved here. That is beautiful. And do they have any symbolism in the intricate uh, handiwork? This one in particular, it has only flowers just for the decorative, but we have others which are symbolic. You can see they have the verse of Quran on top of the door. Others have the name of the, the house and have other, any particular name you want to, you can have it in there. In fact, here is a master craftsman I was talking about, Mze uh, Ali Sikanda. What kind of crafts did he develop? He was making a lot of doors. In fact, he's, um, he has made a carved door for our parliament in Nairobi. Wow, and so he's outstanding very well door. known. Yeah, he's an outstanding door. So beside the carved door, we have other important uh, items in our museum we can show you. Please lead the way. In fact, here we have another piece, important piece of, uh, of artifact. This is called Siwa. What is that? This is a symbol of authority. In fact, it is blown by a, a mudir. So, this is when it is blown, it, it shows that there is an important information for, for the mudir to pass across to the public. Is it still used today? And nowadays, we don't have that one. We have a similar thing to that. We have called Mbiu. So that is a continuity of the Siwa for our community here in Lamu. Speaking of continuities, I know that there are the Daos that have been used for hundreds of years. And in fact, walking around the town, I see them on the coast all the time. In fact, Lamu is full of Dao. And here in our museum, we have a room to display different types of Dao. And we have the, the space here. Wow. You know what, Hush? I think the Dao must be very important because you've got this huge room dedicated to it. Yeah, it is very important. In fact, Dao is a very important uh, item in, our, in Lamu. In fact, Lao has a very long history of transportation. We started making Dao out of uh, ropes and uh, timber. And uh, it has been playing a very important role between the islands. And as you can see here, we have different type of dao. This one is different type from India and the other one from uh, Arabia. And we have the local dao here, which are made locally. So dao is a very important item in our day-to-day -day activity in Lamu. Haj, thank you so much for this very insightful tour of the Lamu Museum. Yes. I'm very excited to now go and see the old town for myself and maybe even jump on one of these dows. Uh, you're welcome to have another visit to Lamu Museum. Thank, thank you. you very much. Square, also known as Mgunguni, used to be a landing site for marine activities during the Swahili Golden Age, which was from around the year 900 to 1500. The market today is still a bustling centerpiece of trade, in addition to being an amazing tourist attraction. An old Swahili saying goes, a man without a donkey is a donkey. Donkeys have always played a key part of life on the island and are still the main form of transport. But it's not just hard work and no rest for these beasts of burden. They have their own dedicated donkey hospital and sanctuary. Dr. Felix. Hi, yeah. How are you? I'm okay. Welcome to the Donkey Center. Thank you so much. So tell me, how did you become a doctor of donkeys? Uh, I undertook a training in veterinary medicine from the University of Nairobi. 
Okay, so and that means that you can actually treat any animal. So yes. why did you focus on the donkey? Uh, I decided to focus on the donkey because of two things. One, because I work for the Donkey Sanctuary, an organization that mostly focuses on improving the welfare of donkeys. Then secondly, I realized that these donkeys are, are, are marginalized. Not so many vets are interested in treating these donkeys. But the other thing that I've seen on the very narrow alleyways of Lamu are the motor bikes. Um, are they going to one day replace the donkey as a mode of transport? No, no, no. I don't think that is possible because uh, Lam Lam Lamu people are, at are culturally attached to their donkeys. And secondly, the narrow paths in Lamu cannot allow these motorbikes to, to be used in, in Lamu. Do they like to be petted? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You can go ahead and do it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. good donkey, good yeah. donkey. Hey, I'm going to my next destination. Could one of your donkeys, are they well enough to take me? Yeah, I can give you maybe one that has fully recovered to take you to, the, to, to your next destination. That would be a new experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope you'll enjoy it today. All along the beautiful Lamu coast, hundreds of dhows can be seen plying the water. The iconic triangular lateen sail has changed little over the last 2,000 years, and for hundreds of years, they've been the main form of transport along the East African coast. We're on our way to meet Ali Skanda, a modern-day dhow master who does some very unique things with dhows today. Hi. Ali, it's yes. finally nice to meet you. You're yes. most welcome. So we were at the Lamu Museum yesterday uh -huh. and we learned all about the illustrious history of your family uh -huh. in the making of the dows and the furniture. Uh -huh. And we were told that you also are in the family business. Yes, I do all dow building and furniture too. Yeah? Yes. And now behind us we see this very colorful dow. Is this one of your creations? Yeah, this is a new innovation. Can we go and show you how we have made it? I would love to learn. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. A friend of mine approached me after knowing my history of dow building and furniture. Then uh, he requested me to help on this idea and then we communicated together with him. We went for the research in different industry of Kenya and we came up to start this project. And all of these plastic materials, the bottles and also, I mean, the hundreds of pairs of flip-flops that are here, have you imported them here or where did they come from? We all collect this from our oceans here, on our beaches, yeah. Like, that's sad. It's wonderful yeah. that you've done that, but it's very sad. Yeah, and still we are receiving so many and more. We are still uh, on the beaches and they are coming. Like last year, but one, we had over 33 tons. Last year, we had over 20 tons and now we're having a lot. So it's a lot of plastic arriving in our oceans. So it's not enough that the plastic revolution is here in Lamu. Do you have plans to bring it out? Many parts of the world has been trying to give awareness of the problem of plastic. But for me, I thought a moving object will be much more interesting and we can reach in many parts. That's why we created this board. Well, and what is your big dream? Uh, is how people we can get safeness of ourselves and uh, to protect our planet. The planet today is on danger. So we have to look and uh, all the world, all people, we have to share hands and come up to this solution of uh, pollution. Pollution today is exceeding and if we are not serious, it will be beyond our holding capacity. So we should be serious, come down and get the solution. Thank you so much for all your insights. We want to wish you the best of luck and also with your efforts to rid the environment of all the plastics. Now we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue our exploration of the historic and the modern Lamu. Don't go away. China Global Television Network. From broadcast centers in Beijing, Washington, and Nairobi. A unique global perspective.
6 channels and a video content service. News when you want it and where you want it. On TV screens, websites, mobile platforms and social media. CGTN. See the difference. A trip to Lamu wouldn't be complete without a cruise through the ancient mangrove forests. These forests are one of the most recognizable and beautiful sites on the archipelago and have formed a key part of the economy and infrastructure of Lamu for hundreds of years. However, overuse has meant a worrying rate of deforestation which affects the entire ecosystem. With me is Isaac Abubakar of Safe Lamu, which is a community-based organization. And Isaac is a board member at Safe Lamu, and he's here to tell us a little bit more about protecting the mangrove forests here. Hi, Isaac. I know you're from Lamu, and you must be used to this scenery, but for us, this is absolutely stunning. And behind us, we see endless stretches of the mangrove forest. What is the significance of these forests to the people in this region? Uh, in Lamu we have a lot of natural resources and uh, most of the people here they depend on, the, on those natural resources to their livelihood because if you see, you, you might see that when we talk of Bajuni they depend on the mangrove as a natural resource to their livelihood. Our elder fathers they were using this mangrove to do business with, uh, uh, with different countries in the world especially the Arab countries and uh, also they were building most of the houses, the 95 percent of Lamu houses they were made of mangrove and those who are coming here maybe like foreigners who comes and buy the houses here they renovate them so they don't renovate into the design that they know to their countries they normally design it the Swahili culture houses so they also use the same mangroves to renovate because the mangrove is still there because why are they still there because those people our elder fathers, our old fathers, they were using this mangrove in a sustainable way. That's why we still have mangroves here. And in terms of like fish life, animal life, is, that, is it also a protection or a sanctuary for them? Yes, because uh, most of the fish uh, comes to breed uh, 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 in the mangroves. Uh, also, we have um, uh, some birds in the mangrove of crabs and many many things uh, that uh, the, the marine animals they normally depend on the, uh, on the on the mangroves the mangrove forests they cover about 60 percent of kenya's coastline how can you go about enforcing that people don't use um, these power tools to harvest the wood in an unsustainable way um, we have been moving around the entire lamu county sensitizing them and uh, apart from that, we also have been working very closely with uh, uh, the, the World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF. Uh, we also have uh, a Pate Marine Conservancy, which includes the local community themselves. So these people are the ones who are uh, they're trying to, to make sure that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the power saw are not using uh, for harvesting uh, the, the mango. We also, uh, we as Save Lamu, we have that we call bulk SMSs. So if we are not going somewhere, we have a specific day that we normally send a bulk SMS that can go to even a thousand people or 500 people, trying to sensitize them on the importance of the environment around us. Well, as a visitor to your beautiful island, um, I find the mangrove forest to be absolutely stunning. So good luck on your efforts trying to preserve it. Thank you and pleasure to meet you. Thank you. In addition to the German settlers who founded the post office back in the 1800s, the Chinese footprint on the Lamu archipelago actually dates some 600 years back, when Zheng He led a fleet to explore the Swahili coast. If you look right here next to me, you'll see a small patch of mangrove forest. It's actually surrounded by treacherous rocks. 
It's believed that a Chinese ship was sunk right there, but luckily the sailors survived and they managed to swim ashore where they intermarried with the local people. And now hundreds of years later, their descendants continue to thrive in the CU village of Patti Island. Pate is the largest island in the Lamu archipelago and is rich in historical landmarks like Shinga Village and the Siu Fort. And now we're on our way to visit a family with a surprising heritage who've been living here for generations. Hello! Hi! Fatima! And this is Mama! Hello! It's very nice to meet you and your family. We've heard so much about you. Now, can you tell me about your family's history here on Pate Island? Okay, Sarah. To call me a Kaminki Hapa, me a Kaminki Hapa, me a Mundus, me a Tatus, me a Miniki Sana to call Hapa. Now, to know you, you are Sissy, me a China, or Sabu Family as they to one of our Machina. That's very interesting. But how did the Chinese government know about your family, and how could they establish that you were of Chinese uh, descendants? Walikuwa wana kujia kama nini vile wageni na kujia hapa muna uliza familia wareno wa China warabu sasa awa kina mama ngodo wana kasura wa China watu wa kumambi anenda kwa ile nyumba wa kwa China. Wa China, go a Kaja, a Kulizla, a mamma in China, China, my Tokia Vipi Paka Kuam China, the mamma come with it there to Li Kuama Babuze to what is Kujana Meli to Kazaliwa. Besides your family, mm -hmm. um, in this area, are there other people who are descendants from the Chinese sailors? Wako Wingi, do you go like in Hawataki, Kutoka, Kunima Kamera? Mama, I understand you actually have five kids. So this is your oldest daughter, and uh, of the five children, two of them are in China on scholarships. Can you tell us, Fatima, how was it that they came to get these scholarships to go to China, and what are they studying? Alipata scholarship ku lingana sisi ni wachina na tulukubali kuwa ni wachina. Walipuja waka promise. Sister Angu, who are at Ampatia Scholarship. Paka Kamaliza from four. Akimaliza from four, and Doaka. I can definitely see the Chinese features on both you and Mama's face. Uh, besides these characteristics that were left behind, do you have anything else from your ancestors who sailed here? Yes, we have. Well, can we have a look? Yes, okay. Let me ring. Thank you. Okay. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. This is stunning. So these have been in the family for how long? Where's From grandma. From grandmother of mm -hmm. mama, yes. right? Mm -hmm. To mama uh, and then to, to you. you. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us okay. and it's been lovely meeting both of you. Thank okay. you, Mama. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye, Bye Mama. Lamu was the epicenter of East Africa's maritime trade in the 1800s, and China's modern generation is contributing to the renewal of this title with the building of the new Lamu port. This will be the linchpin of the Lapset Corridor, which when complete will include railways and roads to both Ethiopia and South Sudan. Our last stop on our walk through Lamu is a visit to the port to get a first-hand look into Lamu's future. 
we're here on site at the new Lamu port and joining me is Mr. Tu Chida, who is a deputy project manager with the China Communications Construction Company and they've been employed by the Kenyan government to construct phase one of the new Lamu port. Chida, as you know, we've been walking through Lamu over the past couple of days. What is it about this particular stretch of the Swahili coast that makes it such an ideal port? Lamu Port Project is the one of the seven key components for Lapsec Corridor Project. We spring together with Kenya, South Sudan and SIP together. And uh, secondly, uh, as you said, there's a long creek in Kenya coast. But uh, it's not every place can build a port. And we call this place is the Manda Bay. And uh, you see, uh, at that side, there's a natural barrier protect the, this, this area and reduce the, the wind and also reduce the wave and which is really important for the power safety operation. Now I also understand that this port has been called already an ultra modern facility and state of the art. Can you tell us what are the unique characteristics that makes it so futuristic? Uh, this port is designed and built for the modern deep port. Uh, with the depths of minus 17.5 uh, with because this is the deep pop so it means that this pop can burst a bigger vessel after this pop complete and the handover by October 2020 it can burst three uh, 12,000 TU container together what are some of the impacts economically that you're making on the region locally but also across the board till now we have employed around a thousand Kenyans to work for this project. And among these a thousand Kenyans, there are 20 numbers of local engineers. I think they can study the, the marine engineering technology and also the management skill. And as we know, Kenya, Kenya's infrastructure is many, many projects. So I think after they learn the engineering and management skills, they can play a role. Kenya projects. Uh, in the construction of the port, what have you done about protecting the ecology and the beautiful natural environment? Um, for the environment, environmental protection is very important to Kenya and also is very important to our company. Uh, first of all, uh, before this project starts, our client, Kenya Post Authority, has done the environmental assessment report and get the normal license. And for us, from our side, we are doing the monthly environmental monitoring, monitoring the, the water quality and the dust control. And one action we, maybe I can mention, because we have the, so many offshore equipment and the oil leaking is the really big issue for us. And how to prevent the leaking, we, uh, we, play, we put uh, oil support plate under the equipment to collect the oils and to prevent the oils spoil the, the sea. What do you guys do for fun and to relax? Um, you know, we, are, we work here and we are living here. We are trying to improve our life here. So we, are, we have the facility for sports, such as the football and the basketball and also the ping pong. And also somebody can even do the gyms in our living area. Well, that sounds like quite a lot of fun. Thank you very much and good luck. With the future looking bright, as Lamu is set to become once again the epicenter of maritime trade in East Africa, it's time for us to say goodbye to the beautiful Lamu archipelago. A big thank you to all of the fascinating people that we've met. And remember, you can keep the conversation going through our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. From me, Liu Feifei, and the team here in Lamu, thank you and see you next time.